Good morning, everybody. It is time to get caught up in the world of motorsports. We're going to do that right now with the Monday morning race review brought to you by our good friends at Iowa Speedway. We turn our attention to the local scene and let you know what happened around here on Friday evening, folks. And how about the things that happened over at Marshalltown Speedway? Take a look and let you know how people did over at Marshalltown on Friday, August the 10th. There are your winners. Uh, look at these all familiar names right toward the beginning with Travis and Ron. On Shannon Damon, but look at this, Sean Cooney, congratulations. First time late model feature win for Sean Cooney. Great job out of him. That's Marshalltown Speedway on Friday evening. Now, uh, Stewart also runs on Friday evening, and here are the results from Stewart Speedway on Friday night. Again, Stewart, what a fun track that is. Nice little bull ring that goes on here. Show the results there. Here you go. Uh, all those familiar names uh, finishing one, two, and three in their respective divisions. Now, what I want to let you know, uh, Stewart is is racing tonight. In case you're looking for something to do a little later on tonight, IMCA.TV has a special event. Uh, Monday Night Spotlight is what they call it. And if I'm not mistaken, you can even watch a little bit this, of this on Facebook. So if you want to see what's going on at Stewart Speedway later on tonight, follow along with them or IMCA.TV for all the details there. But racing here on a Monday night, how fun is that? Now Boone on Saturday had a bunch of things going on. So let's give you the results from the Boone Speedway on Saturday evening. Uh, again, very familiar names of finishing up front at Boone Speedway. So great job there. But the entire world in motorsports was focusing on one major event that was happening here in Iowa. We're talking about the Knoxville Nationals, the 58th Knoxville Nationals. And boy, do we have some great highlights for you folks. Let's roll the beautiful uh, footage here. Take this. Take a look at this, folks. This is how things start off. 50 lap, 150 thousand dollar to win feature fireworks as you see going off drop of the green flag Brad Sweet just sets a torrid pace he runs out to about a three second lead but everybody was watching the battle for a second this was a uh, 10 time champion Donnie Schatz and NASCAR's Kyle Larson swapping positions back and forth time and time again absolutely amazing what these two guys did they really put on a show but they have a little break and then after the break look Look at that, 57, that's Kyle Larson taking the lead away from Brad Sweet, but Sweet says, no, 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 NASCAR boy, uh, this is my territory. You may have led here for a couple of laps, but I'm gonna continue leading this race. Larson says, I didn't fly all this way to have you win this thing. So Kyle Larson drives around the outside, then gets a little too high, and then Sweet just says, get in my rear view mirror, even though he doesn't really have one, but that's the whole idea. And then Shots, last corner of the race. Is Shots gonna make it number 11? Here he comes out of the corner. No, Sweet hangs on. This was the second closest finish in Knoxville Nationals history. Absolutely amazing. You want to talk about a very excited winner there. How about that? That is Casey Kane's driver there. Brad Sweet wins. The Big Cat takes home the gigantic trophy. Check that out. There's the Donnie Shots on the left. There's Kyle Larson on the right. And of course, Brad right smack dab in the middle. You want to know how excited Brad Sweet was uh, for Knoxville Nationals and winning this. You're going to be able to see emotion you're going to see uh, physical exhaustion and everything rolled into one. Uh, here's Mike Roberts in victory lane as soon as Brad gets there. Take a look. How about that, boys and girls? That was, I held off two of the best in the business. This Nap Auto Parts car was flying all weekend. We led every lap of every AMA we were in here at Knoxville this weekend. And it wasn't easy against the hardest competition in the world. We've been talking since last Sunday at the Capitani Classic and how fast this car was. Kyle Larson was the first one to test you on that restart. I wasn't sure the tires were going to work for you or not. The car looked like it was really wicked that first couple laps. Yeah, I made a few mistakes. <laughs> can't breathe. I think I held, a, held my breath those last two laps. I wasn't sure if I wanted that caution or didn't. You know, Donnie breathing down my throat. I told myself I better hit these two. Two laps on the bottom, perfect. And uh, they weren't perfect, but they were good enough to get the win. Good enough to get the win, indeed. When that yellow flag, that red flag came out, rather, and Matson flipped, that red flag came out. How did you keep your composure? I was honestly uh, here. I was actually very uh, uptight and nervous all day. And that video of uh, Jason Johnson came on, and I teared up and. Uh, you know, my mind went really calm and, and uh, it made me just realize just 
do what Jason would do. Just go out there and run the <laughs> out of it. And uh, <laughs> that's what I did. And I sure the hell hope he's he's looking down, smiling. Man, I dreamed when he wanted the feeling that he had, and here we are. It's a it's unbelievable. I just want to cry and faint and hug and kiss and drink lots of beer. <laughs> that's what we're gonna do right now. Race fans, give it up. Ah, what a great quote at the end there. I'm sure that'll be on a t-shirt here sooner or later, but just look at some of these images, uh, you know, Conrad Nelson capturing uh, the motion and the moment uh, there in victory lane. Uh, again, the top three um, were uh, Brad Sweet, uh, Donnie Schatz, and uh, Kyle Larson uh, right there. Getting sprayed with champagne is always fun. We mentioned that he was, uh, you know, shorter than the trophy. There it is. That's how short this guy is compared to the trophy or how tall the trophy is compared to everybody else when they do that. But Here's a picture that was really kind of a cool thing to see. See that guy uh, uh, right next to Donnie Schatz. There's Donnie Schatz on the left. Right next to him, Justin Allgaier. Justin was just at the Mid-Ohio racetrack. He just won in the NASCAR Xfinity Series and flew back to see his guy who is over on the other side, Kyle Larson. Uh, he's, a, he's sponsored by Brant. Kyle, uh, Kyle is sponsored by Brant as well. But how about that? The guy who just wins the NASCAR Xfinity Series race in a different time zone flies over to Knoxville to see the A-Main and check out all the action. That was pretty cool. But we mentioned Casey Kane. Uh, he's the owner of Sweet's car, and he was there, obviously, too. So, again, what a great celebration in Victory Lane at Knoxville. Take a look at the results here, let you know where uh, all the folks that you may have heard of or watch on a regular basis around here and how they did. Uh, take a look at that. Uh, Shots and then Larson there. Uh, Ian Matson, uh, again, the Matsons are always doing well here. Gio Selzy, 16 year old's youngest person ever to race in the A main at the Knoxville Nationals, uh, beating Jeff Gordon's record. He had the record before he is 18 when Jeff Gordon raced in this event years ago. Uh, Kerry Matson there, you, you heard him mention uh, Kerry uh, did uh, have a little bit of a problem. Uh, Terry McCarl finished his 23rd. Rico Abreu, uh, he got upside down as well. He finished 24th, and Brian Brown uh, brings up the tail of the field there. But that's how things went at Knoxville Raceway for the Knoxville Nationals, 58th running of that event. They're not done racing at Knoxville, just so you know. There are a couple of more events going on. Late Model Nationals a little later on this year. We'll follow along and let you know what's going on on there. Now that was really cool because uh, a lot of people were riding high over what happened at the Corrigan Oil 200 at the Michigan International Speedway. Why do we pay attention to this? Because this is the Camping World Truck Series event and this is the last lap. That is uh, Johnny Sauter in the lead and we'll take a look and see who's behind him. That's Grimes' Brett Moffitt. Brett wants to win this race. He's won this race before. He has not led a lap of this event the last mile right about here of the race it's a two mile track brett's going to give it a shot here Sauter is on the high side he sees an opening down on the low side and here comes our very own brett moffett making a run for the stripe see if he can beat him to the finish line and when they cross the start finish line brett moffett wins the race again Folks, this guy has made a habit out of this. Now this is being called winning Moffitt style by just leading the last lap of an event. He did it again. I believe this is the fourth run for him, fourth win of the year for Brett Moffitt. Obviously, security locked himself in to the playoff situation. Great job out of him. Now, uh, we uh, contacted Brett's folks, and it looks like he's going to be on with us tomorrow. We said if you win, you get to be on CW Iowa Live. Well, he won, and they're making arrangements right now. We'll let you know a little later on what time Brett's going to be on with us uh, via Skype before he heads to Bristol. The next race is Bristol, and this will be a Thursday night race for the Truck Series. Uh, Johnny finishes in second. John Hunter Nemechek there too. Gilliland doing a great job there. Uh, Stuart Friesen, a lot of people thought he was going to take this event. I uh, end up stumbling a little bit and finishing in eighth place. So there is what you have there. Now time to switch on over to the Xfinity Series. We already gave you uh, an indication as to uh, who was going to do well here in the Xfinity Series. Actually, this is at the Mid-Ohio racetrack, so take a look at the results here as uh, Justin Allgaier ends up winning that event, so congratulations to Justin 
Allgaier there. Annette finished in 18th, and Joey Gase finished in 24th there. Now, uh, time to move on over to the uh, NASCAR Cup Series, the uh, Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series, the Consumer Energy 400 at the Michigan International Speedway. And this was all the Kevin Harvick show, and that's exactly how it concluded. He won the stages, won the event here. That is Harvick's 44th win in the Cup Series, and that, you know, puts him in, uh, you know, tall, uh, tall cotton because he has tied Bill Elliott for the number of wins in the Cup Series. Uh, Brad Keselowski ends up getting second place, Kyle Busch third. Austin Dillon was positioned to finish in second place, but then had a vibration in the last lap of the event and had to fall back into fourth place. Ryan Blaney finished in fifth in this event. So there you have it, the results from the uh, race over at the Brooklyn, Michigan area, the 400 mile race for the Monster Energy Cup Series. And one more final thing, wanna make sure that we do wanna mention, I uh, wanna let you know about a Hall of Famer from right here in Des Moines. You might remember seeing that car on the racetrack around here in the Des Moines area, all over Iowa. How about this folks? And the person has inducted into the Dirt Late Model Hall of Fame. This is over in Ohio. Don Hoffman of Des Moines gets the honor. Congratulations to him. He is in the class of 2018. There you have it, folks. Uh, there is your Monday morning race review.